What's going on everybody? So I've spent some quality time in the MPC Beat software and I now have a much better understanding of how to actually use it. So in honor of the MPC sampling history, let's make a sample beat while I explain the process that I use. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and load up an empty project here. And the first thing that I like to do is actually come over here. And this is like a project manager place where we can actually browse through and load up different resources. So what I'm gonna do is come down to the bottom right here and open the media browser. And these are all kind of the free sounds and kits that come with MPC Beats. So I'm gonna start by looking for an actual kit here and I'm thinking some kind of hip hop kit. So now we can click on them and hear what they sound like. And once we find one we like, we can actually just click and drag it right into this little project section here and it will be loaded into the programs that we have available to us. And we'll come back to the programs track and sequence for a better understanding of how that actually works. So now let's continue by looking for an instrument. I think I'll load up this electric guitar instrument. So now we have an instrument and a drum kit. And now let's look for some bass. All right, I kind of like this clean bass sound. We'll load that up. And so now we have drums, bass, and lead. Now let's go ahead and look for a sample that we actually have on our computer. So down again at the bottom right, we can transform our browser into our actual computer and we can start going through our different files. So I'm going to navigate to my samples folder. So I'm going to choose this sample right here and again we can just click and drag that right into our project folder here. So now that we've got all the sounds and kits loaded into the actual project, let's go back to this sequence track and program area over here and talk about that for a minute. So with the sequences, we have different sequences based on bar amounts. So we'll just change this to four so that we're working with a four bar loop. And here we can set it to loop or not loop. Let's just keep it on loop and we'll create a four bar sequence. Now within the tracks, I've noticed that we have different kinds of tracks. So here we have a drum track, here we have a key group track, and here we have a plugins. And there's also a few different ones like MIDI, CV gate, and clip. I'm not really sure what the clip does, but the MIDI and CV gate are pretty self-explanatory. Anyway, based on the actual track type that you choose, you'll have different programs available to you. So here we have our drum program, because we've selected a drum track. If we switch over to the key group, we have our guitar and our bass instruments because those are based on keys. And alternatively, we can load up one of our own VST plugins by selecting this plugin option. And so based on the type of track you're working with, that will determine what programs are available to you on that specific type of track. So now let's do a bit of chopping with our sample. And the best way to do this is to come back to the project area and we're gonna double click on our sample here. And now this will bring it up and bring us up a few different options. Now within here, we can choose the chopping option. And so now we can actually come in here and click to add different slices. And if we wanted to delete all the slices, we come down here and we could do the minus all option. And now we're back to normal. So one way to slice would be to do it manually. Another way would be to trigger the pad. So And basically when I'm doing that, every time I hit a pad, we are actually making a new slice based on timing. So let's go ahead and minus all. And what I think I'm gonna do here is actually select the BPM option. And so here we can choose different time divisions to actually slice our beats. So right now, knowing that my sample is at 95 beats per minute, I'm gonna go ahead and change the actual tempo to match. And then what we're gonna do is actually create a new program. Now you have a non-destructive convert option and an extract new samples. I'm gonna choose the non-destructive, create a new program, click do it. And now what we can do is come to the main tab, select track one, make sure we're using a drum track. 
and we can actually load up those chops here. And so let's go ahead and record a pattern. So we'll turn on the metronome and hit play. Alright, so our pattern sounding pretty good for our samples. And so now let's go ahead and move on to track two. And we'll still use a drum program and we'll put in our hip hop drums. So one thing that I definitely want to mention is the time correction strength and time correct. Last time I didn't understand why my drums were snapping to the grid even though I was a little bit off time. And it's because this time correction option was actually set to on. So let's just go ahead and turn that off. Okay, so I'm going to start by recording in the kick and snare. And then we'll come back to the hi-hats. So now that our kick and snare is recorded in, we'll come here to time division, and right now we have it set to 16th notes. So if we turn note repeat on, we're repeating at 16th notes. Okay, so our drums are sounding pretty good along with our samples. Let's go ahead and move on to track three and we'll use a key group and we'll add in some 808. So I definitely want to use the pad perform mode for this bass track, especially because I know the sample was actually in G sharp major. So that would be A flat. Looks like we have it set up there. Major with two octaves. And so now we're in key. I'm gonna go ahead and transpose this track by 12 semitones. And now we're completely in key. All right, I think I found a pattern that I like. Let's go ahead and try recording it in. Our time correction is on, which is fine right now. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and move on to track four and see if we can't add a little counter melody with this guitar. We'll make sure, yep, it looks like we're still using the pad perform mode to make sure we're in scale. And you know, I'm having a bit of trouble with this instrument, so I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the browser and try to find a different instrument to use. We're gonna go ahead and try out this instrument called Popcorn. We'll go ahead and switch to it in the program. All right, so I've come up with a simple counter melody. Let's go ahead and record that in now. All right, so this is the beat we've got so far. And so yeah, this is kind of the workflow that I've been using. I don't really mix in MPC beats. Instead, what I'll do is actually export. And we can actually export this as an Ableton Live set. Now, I haven't really messed around with that as much. I've just been doing the as audio mix down. And instead of using the basic stereo outputs, instead what I'll do is I'll separate the programs. And then we get basically stems and so i'll do 48k in 24 wave format and then i'll hit the export key take this into ableton mix it up arrange it how i like it and then my beat is done but yeah and mpc beats is a great place to get your ideas down and just get started with beat making it's really fun to use and there's a lot more features that i haven't covered but this should be enough to get you started making beats in MPC Beats. So thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next time.